Alright, Magma Sorceries. I'm pretty sure no one has ever tried to use them while playing the game, and for a good reason. They are hot garbage, as you will see in the video. So with them being that bad, I thought to myself, why not try to beat the game with them? That sounds like fun. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. The rules for this run are simple. I can only use Magma Sorceries to deal damage to enemies, everything else is pretty much fair game. That means buffing myself with other spells is allowed as long as those buffs don't do direct damage to enemies. So with that out of the way, let's get to the meat of it. We name ourselves Rykard, cause lore wise he was the one who created those sorceries and we choose the Astrologer class. We will need the stats that the class provides. Our first objective will be to find a way to deal damage to enemies in the beginning. Luckily there is somewhat of an easy solution to this, but before we get to that let's pick up a few more items around the start. First of all we grab our trusted steed from our waifu Melina, then we teleport ourselves all the way to the wastelands of Caled. Man, I remember the first time I was ported to this place, it just blew my mind immediately. We grab the Meteorite Staff, the best early game staff available to my knowledge. It falls short later on cause it can't be upgraded, but for now it is a great choice. Next we have to grab both of the Dectus medallions so we can access Altos. We need to go to Altos so we can grab our first magma spell. But before we get to Altos, we need to traverse through Lyurnia first. I do some cheeky speedrun jumps to get to the plateau behind Stormvale. On my way throughout the place I grab the two fingers talisman. One thing I forgot to mention, the magma sorceries require quite a decent amount of faith to wield them. So we can solve that problem with this talisman. After grabbing the academy key, we use the teleporters on the broken bridge to travel to the highway. And after avoiding a bunch of trebuchets, we arrive at the Tectus Lift, and onto the Altos Plateau itself. Now skipping this entire place for now, we travel to Mount Gelnir. After dodging some magma geysers and avoiding a huge magma worm, we grab our first and only offensive spell for now, Roiling Magma. It's called Roiling and not Rolling, which is what I called it all of the time. The way that this spell works is that it throws out a hot boulder that sticks to surfaces and explodes after a couple of seconds dealing pretty significant damage. Now with that on hand, we can try to tackle the first major boss, Margit. Fighting Margit has never been a strong suit of mine, especially when using spells like these. I do damage to do a significant amount of damage to him, but we can make this fight a lot easier with a bit more of a setup beforehand. I travel back to Kaelid to land as Rai specifically, so I can use the Rolling Boulder farming spot. I grind here for a bit to get a bit more powerful for Margit. Now unlike other people, I will first focus on getting my health to level 40 so I can actually survive some hits and after that I will focus on my damage output. This simply makes the game 10 times easier for me. Now back to Margit. For the first phase of the fight I employ the strategy of shooting the boulders on the ground so that the explosion hits him. The explosion does more damage than hitting him directly on, by the way. But for phase 2 I had to change that. He moves and prances around like a ballerina in this phase so it's hard to keep him in one place and me in one piece. So with my damage being pretty solid, I just shoot him directly with my magma for the rest of the fight. And after a couple of tries, Margit goes down under. First challenge run where Margit wasn't a giant pain in my behind actually. Time to prance around Stormwell as usual. I take the bath on the cliffs to the side of the castle and walk until I meet these flying menaces. Fuck, get off me you bastards! I swear, if Gandalf had eagles like these, the Lord of the Rings trilogy would have ended Sauron in the first movie. Anyway, the rest of this place goes like the usual walkthroughs. Nothing special here until we get to the boss. Before going in though, we grab the golden seed right beside the boss room and talk to our wife from Nefel. Gotta say, you definitely are mainless in this game despite what people say. Going in to fight Godric though, we encounter a problem that always happens when you use magic of any kind. The damage output problem. Right now we just don't have enough DPS to kill Godric even if he land everything perfectly, which is also not happening, so time to collect a couple more power-ups around the world. Originally I wanted to grab Lusat's staff for the damage boost to sorceries, but defeating the boss wasn't doable just yet, so I wanted to jump into the arena. Unfortunately this jump is super precise, so I had to give up on it. It's 100% possible, I just didn't want to waste all of my time on this. I just collected a bunch of golden seeds and sacred tears, and hoped that it would be enough to deal with Godric. Now back to the fight. Thankfully Godric is kinda slow, so most of the time the explosion of my maga shots would hit him a lot more. For example, once he transitions to phase 2, he stands still to shoot me with his fire attack. That gives me enough time to plant my mines beside him. The rest of the fight is just repeating this process, hitting him directly when I could and planting my mines all over the place. After repeating the process for a while and with a lot of patience, Godric goes down. Magma beats fire bitch, just ask Portcast the ace. At this point I was getting kinda sick of the rolling magma spell. I wanted to get something a little more faster. Volcano Manor has me covered on that point. After talking to Rhea and returning her necklace, she ports us to the manor directly. And the first objective Tanif gives us is to kill the knight Istran. Killing a player NPC with just the Roiling Magma is no easy task, let me tell you. Especially cause Istran is an absolute monster compared to me at this point. 
NPCs in this game dodge pretty much every spell you cast at them. But they are kinda dumb otherwise and just walk straight into the explosions of my magma for some reason. Still, if he does hit me, I'm immediately deleted. But with a bit of patience, I just shoot my load around his feet and repeated this till he died, giving me his armor and receiving from Tanif the spell that would carry us through the rest of the game. Magma Shot. This is like the glintstone pebble of the magma sorceries, only a billion times worse. But it does use half the AP of the rolling magma, so it's a better option of the two. Well, time to abuse some animals again. I swear to god Miyazaki, if I have to kill another dog in your next game, I'm gonna be really pissed. Anyhow, Radagon's pet isn't too much of an issue. He is quite fast, but we do solid damage to him, so he doesn't stand a chance. And I defeated him on my second try. Now with the doggy down, we can grab another useful talisman, Radagon's icon. I figure more casting speed is always gonna be useful, especially with the faster bosses later on. On my way to the boss, I encounter a weird glitch with a knight guarding this place. He fell from the elevator and just got stuck on the edge of the hole. I just put him out of his misery, the poor guy. Usually Renala is invincible against sorceries due to her high magic resistance, but thankfully magma sorceries do fire and physical damage which is pretty neat. Still, this is not going to be a piece of cake, don't judge a book by its cover. She may look frail, but can slap your ass if you're not careful. In between my deaths I picked up the Graven School Talisman, which is hidden in the academy quite well. It boosts my sorcery damage by 4%, not too much, but every little bit helps. I also grabbed the Intelligence Not Crystal Tear for my Physics Flask, I used some sick jumping to hop over this railing and get down to the lake. After that I used this teleporter to get myself faster to our boy EG. Using these teleporters really makes traversing Leonia a lot more of a pleasant experience, let me tell you. Now back to Renala. The first phase is not too much of a problem as always, but the second phase, Jesus. Now I know why I never had problems with her in my first playthrough, cause I leveled up my health and used a melee weapon. When you're using magic she becomes 5 times harder to deal with, especially when she starts summoning her companions. The fight was a gentle dance of dodging her magic that one shots me and hitting her with her own son's magic to heal her. Funny how these things go, huh? At the end of the day, there really wasn't too much to it. Just hit and don't get hit, as they say in boxing. And after dodging and weaving a bunch, we finally take her down. With this, the capital should be finally open now. We are not ready though in the slightest for the capital just yet. Blitzing through the game makes you quite underleveled, so we need to fix that pronto. I need to finish up Vare's questline to get to a really tight farming spot that will be essential to this run. After talking to Vare at the church, he asked us to invade a couple of poor souls. Here is how one of those invasions went. I actually managed to do some damage with just my sorceries, but in the end I just got mauled as expected. Thankfully you don't need to actually win the invasions, you just need to do them. Now returning to Vare, he asks us for the final offering, which is made in blood as always. I happily oblige and kill Erina in the Weeping Peninsula exactly for that purpose. After all of that, Vare brings us into the Covenant of the Lord of Blood and we can teleport ourselves to the Mogwin Palace. Here we can perform my favorite farming glitch in the game. By jumping up on this plateau and then double jumping into our doom, we can get a bunch of runes relatively quickly. And after swinging my sword and falling for a couple of seconds, we get around 8000 runes. Then we just teleport back to a site of grace. Use this method to get to around level 80, leveling up all the important stats like vigor and intelligence. Now the question remains in the air how to approach the game from here on out. I had two options. Go straight to the capital or try to upgrade my setup even more. I decided to go straight to the capital first and then I encountered the bane of my existence, the Draconic Tree Sentinel. He is a toughie. I deal very little damage to him and his speed, ferocity and input reading really halted my advance. Needless to say, I decided to go to plan B, get more powerful. Originally I wanted to grab the Gjelmir staff so that I get a boost to my magma sorcery damage. But that was locked behind the Godskin Noble and as some of you know, he's a giant dick. So I needed to upgrade my setup to upgrade my setup even further. The only other staff that is useful to upgrade is Lusat's staff, the one I wanted to grab at the beginning but couldn't. Now that I'm sufficiently more powerful, I decided to go for it. And as you can see, the double boss fight was an absolute joke. I obliterated them both almost instantly with my rolling magma, and without too much trouble, we can grab Lusat's staff. This is the most powerful staff in the game with the downside that it increases your FP consumption or mana of your spells by 50%. A fair trade for this run if you ask me. I also grabbed the flame shrouding crack tier, I just had to kill an avatar to do so. Since the avatars are just huge trees, they were easily burned to ashes by my magma attacks as expected giving me the crack tier. Now it was time to grab the other upgrade materials to get my staff all the way to plus 6. 
death took a couple of minutes and now I have a significant power spike in the game. The only question that's left is, is that enough to defeat the noble though? It sure is, the noble is still not a piece of cake by any means though. The biggest thing I exploited in this fight was that every time he would start rolling I would get him stuck behind one of the pillars, giving me ample time to shoot magma shots to his face. A dozen or so attempts later and I managed to beat him. With the godskin down I can get the Gelmir staff, or so I thought. See, the problem here is that the way you get the Gelmir staff is by farming this one snake sorcerer. The only problem here is that these guys seem to be entirely immune to my magma sorceries, which makes sense since they were invented here. Nevertheless, that denies me a big damage increase, but I guess I just have to deal with it. The good thing at least is that we can now finally get all the other somber stones to upgrade the sad staff to max level. That in itself is a huge damage boost. Once we level up our intelligence enough, we will have a decent damage output. The other thing that I grabbed was the incantation flame grant me strength. This will be useful later on cause it boosts my physical and fire damage which is perfect for the magma sorceries as they do both of those damage types. We can't use it yet but later on we sure will. Now moving on we face the bane of my existence yet again. This time with a more powerful setup at least. Does it make a difference? I would say that this is a huge improvement. He's still a giant ass though. The biggest thing that I hate about him is that every time I try to back off and heal for a second, he shoots a goddamn fireball to my face every time. He spams those fireballs so much it's absolutely ridiculous. He's also super fast and my magma shots take a while to actually cast, making this fight about finding openings large enough to be able to shoot him and without him shooting me. The fight was super close as it just takes him 2 hits to delete me from existence itself, but like every other boss I have infinite lives and will eventually win with trial and error. As long as you don't lose patience, every boss can be killed with a toothpick if you so desire. The capital is uneventful as always, because I just skipped the entirety by doing this sick little jump onto this ledge just beside the entrance of the city. By that we just jump further down and we are already super close to the next major boss fight. And ooh baby, this fight was satisfying, Gottfried's shade didn't stand a chance. We are pretty powerful for this point of the game and I fought this guy so many times that it's really a joke at this point. The father didn't offer much resistance, let's see how the son will do though. Morgoth is a tough boss, and one of my favorites all in all. I also love just how he blatantly references Morgoth from Tolkien's universe, it's just great. These are the kind of fights where if you don't do trillions of damage you just have to give good at them. The thing I took advantage of the most was whenever he goes into his sword move or his second phase he stands still for quite some time, giving me ample time to blast his ass with magma shots and roiling magma. Most of my damage was done in those moments. The rest of the fight I was just playing it safe and made sure I was not going to get hit once I started casting my magic. Goodbye Morgoth. You may have called me a foul tarnish but I have always respected you. May you finally rest by the earth tree. To give Morgoth your respects I would really appreciate it if you like and subscribe if you enjoy the video so far. It really helps me out a lot. Anyway, with the thorns blocking our way, Melina pops up and gives us the key to our next destination. We stroll onto the mountaintops next as per usual. At this point I pretty much have all that I will ever need, so there is no need to waste my time here. I mainly just pick up the rest of the upgrades for my flasks. So we move straight to the fire giant. This boss is pure counter to my spells and he is mostly resistant to my fire damage and with over 40,000 HP my outlook of beating him doesn't seem too good. But I am persistent and I will find a way no matter what. I am not going to use the wrong warp this time to overcome this challenge, I have something a bit more different in mind. Thanks to James Fach's video, we have a solution to this problem. First we get the fire giant into phase 2, that's easier said than done though. He is resistant to fire so that took a couple of attempts to actually get down. Ok, now once we are in his second phase we move to this particular spot beside the cliff. Then we perform what I call a delayed double jump into the void. I recognize the method? The same one we used for the farming method. Now we just wait a couple of seconds and boom, the fire giant can go straight off a cliff, literally. Thanks James Fach. Now we just move to the kiln, sacrifice one of our waifus, not to worry we have a lot of them, and wake up with a hangover in a city in the sky. Right now we are rushing towards the end of the game, and standing in our way is the Godskin duo. Have I mentioned how much I hate this boss? I first try to deal with them solo, no help from Bernal, and I get really close to killing them. They have a shit ton of health though. My main strategy for this boss is to focus Fatso over here. I can kite him from a relatively safe distance and just spam magma shots to his face. The only problem with that is once he gets to his phase 2, he becomes a lot more of a problem to deal with. So in the end I run out of Estes and just die here. Since I've beaten this boss with multiple challenge runs before, I decide to make my life a bit easier and summon Bernal to aid me. Before you judge me, A. It's not forbidden in the rule set, B. This boss sucks and isn't fun to fight at all. With Bernal's help, I take the attention of Fetzel 
and repeat the same strategy as previously stated. He deals with the skinny one and I deal with the fat one. Got it? Cool. And without too much trouble we beat the hell out of them. Now we can move on to the good bosses. We are only left with 3 bosses before we conclude this run. Malekhev is up next and as always he's going to be a little bit of a problem. His first phase was a bit more of a challenge this time, but once I got in a couple of rounds of practice I managed to get it down with no problem. The main thing with the first phase is patience and not to overcommit on my attacks. Phase 2 though is a problem that will require a bit more of my brain power. Considering that I don't have too much of it, I will need to use it wisely. First of all, he moves around way too much for me to be able to hit him with magma shots. So the only other option I have was to use the Roiling Magma spell. See, I noticed that once he finishes a lot of his combos, he likes to walk menacingly but slowly towards me. Can I exploit this in a way? The answer is yes, yes I definitely can. Pillars are a saving grace to any From Software boss fight. By hiding behind a pillar for the entire fight, I can essentially force Malekhev to constantly walk slowly towards me. And by spamming rolling magma around the ground I can hit him from a relatively safe distance, but more importantly he cannot hit me. And after a couple of minutes Malekhev is murdered. And we grab the rune of death. Two bosses remaining, and I'm not counting Gideon. After waking up at the Ashen capital, we move through the White City and say hello to our good pal Gideon Ofnir. Hello Gideon, bye bye Gideon. Honestly with this monologue lasting this long I don't understand how this was supposed to be ever a real boss fight. Anyway we move on to the main course. The age old question, who wins in a fight? Giga Chad strength user or puny sorcerer? And for the first two hours the Giga Chad beat my ass into submission. Godfrey was too hard to deal with with the tools at my disposal. The first phase I could somewhat deal with, but once phase 2 arrives, Horalu just bum rushes me and Donkey Kongs me. Literally. Alright, alright, I can do this. I just need to put my mind to it. Or whatever is left of it at this point. For phase 1, there really is no particular secret. I figured out how to get him into a semi-consistent loop so that I can land magma shots. Just dodge his close-up swings and run to his side. He will dash to one side and stomp on the ground. This process then repeats until we get to the second phase. Second phase... oh boy. This one took me a while to figure out. The main key point here I noticed is that if I dodge to the sides you eventually are doomed, but if you run away from him and dodge his attacks backwards, he's going to have a lot more of a difficult time hitting you. So I took advantage of it. Thankfully I took a break before fighting him so my reactions were on point. It was one small misstep and I become one with the ground. After kiting him for what felt like an eternity, John Cena finally bites the dust and we are only left with the final boss. Now coming into this fight I was expecting the worst really. Both Radagon and Elden Beast are ferocious beasts. Radagon alone wouldn't be too difficult, he is not resistant to fire and takes an absurd amount of damage per hit for some reason. The only problem here is hitting him, he has this really annoying move where he can parry your spells if he is in an idle animation like walking. After he parries the attack he retaliates with the power of a thousand suns. So the only window of attack that I have available is when he is in a recovery animation from a previous attack. This just makes the fight a long and slow process of baiting out attacks that can be punished without being stomped into the ground. And on top of that, there is still the Elden Beast, which is for a lack of words to describe a giant dickwad. I swear to god if I see one more Elden Star's attack I'm gonna lose my mind. To make the fight somewhat more manageable I want to grab a couple of final upgrades. The first one was Godfrey's icon, which you can get from the Evergowl right beside the deck to sleep. Defeating Godefroy was a piece of cake at this point leaving me with the icon. The talisman makes your charge spells much more powerful so that the fight against the duo will take less time to complete. Next I need Bloodhound step, because that's the only way to avoid Elden Stars in its entirety that I'm aware of. So I go to Lena's Rise at night and beat up the Knight's Cavalry. For the final touch I grab the Health Region Crystal Tear from the Earth Tree Avatar in the Weeping Peninsula. Increasing my health region is a great way to boost my survivability. I did some farming as well, bringing myself to around level 120-ish. The strategy for Radagon is pretty simple. Dodge everything and retaliate whenever he is in a recovery animation. That will most of the time keep us safe enough to get to Elden Beast without losing too much of our flasks. Key to every fight in these games is patience. If you have that, no boss will last forever against you. But after fighting both of them for like 6 hours, my patience has started to run dry. I got to Elden Beast and here I just need to stay close to him and pray that he will cooperate and do his melee attacks mostly. If he does that I will be able to take him down. Both of them can kill us in about 2 hits, so I had to be pretty much perfect to pull this off. Not to mention having to balance our healing flasks together with the ones that refill our mana becomes crucial for this fight as well. If you bring too many healing flasks, you won't have enough damage to kill him. Too few and you have less mistakes which you can actually work with. 
This is why we brought Bloodhound Step with us, as normally some of the attacks from Elden Beast are pretty much unavoidable. With Bloodhound Step we can avoid them mostly without issue. I also forgot to mention that I made great use of the incantation playing Grant Me Strength for this fight, as without the buff I simply wouldn't have enough damage to kill both of them. I started this process at around 11am, almost gave up around 1pm, went to make some lunch, chili in this case, took a break, came back around 3pm and fought them till about 6pm. This was the hardest Elden Beast fight I had so far. But in the end, as I said before, I have infinite lives and they do not, so the inevitable will happen. Needless to say, I finally managed to defeat them, but at the cost of my sanity and my neighbor's eardrums. Elden Ring beaten as the son of Renala and only using magma sorceries. Like and sub and I'll see you in the next one.